Oh shoot. Gothic architecture is an architectural style of flourishing room. Okay. Okay, I think I got this. Gothic architecture, one of the greatest examples of the beauty and capabilities of the human mind. This architectural style was popularized in the 12th century by cathedrals such as Notre Dame, serving as a way to emulate God's divine presence in the mortal world. With so many technological innovations easily accessible in today's society, it has become increasingly difficult to truly appreciate the physical world. In honor of its legacy, the Cathedral of Santa Muerte has been constructed in this legendary style. The overall theme of the Cathedral of Santa Muerte revolves around helping the outcasts of society. There are numerous images throughout the facility related to this theme, such as the two statues in the front carrying a cross. During his crucifixion, Jesus was essentially an outcast as everyone wanted him dead. Despite the betrayal and suffering that humans have caused him, Christ still sacrificed himself for our sake. Isn't it ironic that an outcast ended up saving society? Up here we have stained glass windows. In the era of Gothic architecture, they serve two purposes, to allow light into the building and to aid illiterate people in understanding biblical passages. The light being let in on the inside created this feeling of God's presence. This first window is a depiction of a parable in Matthew's Gospel known as Jesus healing the man with leprosy. Lepers at the time were severe outcasts that no one would even dare interact with. They were often left in small communities to rot away slowly. By healing this leper, Jesus set a precedent that we all must love and care for all people, even if they are different or are defined as sinful. Oh, don't mind that, that's just a standard cross. This second stained glass window is a fish, which refers to Jesus' first miracle, known as the feeding of the 5,000, where he feeds all these people with just five loaves of bread and two fish. This reflects upon people's duty to give to those who lay hungry at night, especially those of us who have abundant access to food. Behind the two supporting towers, we have more stained glass windows. The first is a Bible, symbolizing not only this literary work's importance in the church, but also the power knowledge holds in general. The next window is an image of a candle, representing God's eternal flame. Fire displays God's relationship with his people and is often used as an indicator of his power and whether or not he approves of something. Along this roof, there are many gargoyles. These grotesque figures were used in medieval architecture to divert rainwater off the building's side, preventing the water from eroding the walls. They were also used to scare off evil spirits and protect the cathedral. Nope. At the center of this roof are the bell towers. Every morning at 5, the bells are rung to wake up the priests living near the cathedral and remind them to begin prayer. Alright, so, um, how do I get down from here? No, not that way. Oh, I know. Here we are in the interior, the meat of the cathedral. Right here we have the cross, and below it is the cathedral, the chair where the bishop takes his seat during the mass. Man, this is really cold and uncomfortable. I guess that's how they carry their own cross. Alright, terrible jokes aside, here are the pews, where members of the laity will sit. At the two ends of the cathedral are statues of angels praying. They serve to remind the laity to be mindful and respectful of their surroundings during mass while others are in prayer. Finally, outside the walls of this cathedral is the small village where the priests reside. Close to this village is the food pantry where lady and members of the clergy help feed the hungry, staying true to the main theme of helping the poor and outcast of society. Perhaps one day this concept will break free from the virtual world and take on a physical form, but until that day, it is nothing but an idea.